So now we need to add a many-to-many -many relationship between the courses and tags tables. However, in relational databases, we don't have many-to-many -many relationships. We only have one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationships. So to implement a many-to-many -many relationship between these two tables, we need to introduce a new table, which we call a link table. And we're going to have two one-to-many relationships with that table, exactly like the enrollments table here. So before we introduce the enrollments table, logically, we had a many-to-many -many relationship between the students and the courses. Then we introduced this link table. And as you can see here, we have two one-to-many relationships with this link table. We need to follow the same approach to implement a many-to-many -many relationship between these two tables. So I'm going to add a new table here and call it course tags. So course underline tags. This table determines the tags for each course. So in the courses table, we only have the courses. In the tags table, we only have our tags. And in this new table, we know the tags for each course. Okay. So enter. Here's our new table. Now we need to add our relationships. So I'm going to select this one to many relationship. First, we need to select the child or the foreign key table. And then we need to select the parent or the primary key table. There you go. Now we have a one to many relationship with our link table. Let me scroll to the right. That's better. Now, one more time, I'm going to add another one to many relationship here. First, the child table and then the parent table. Now you can see in this link table, we have two new columns, courses underline course ID and tags underline tag ID. Let's simplify the column names. So I'm going to rename the first column to course ID and the second column to tag ID. Now in this table, once again, we're going to have a composite primary key because the combination of the course and tag ID should be unique. So I'm going to mark both of these as primary key. So link tables are very common in relational databases. Sometimes they only have these two columns, but in other cases, they have additional columns, like our enrollments table. Now let's review our design one more time. So we introduced this new table here, and now we can remove the tags column from the courses table. All right, here are the columns. Let's right click this column and delete it. With these changes, our database is now in the first normal form. Because first of all, we don't have repeating columns like tag one, tag two, and tag three. And we also don't have multiple values in a column. So all our tags are stored here in one place. If we need to rename a tag, this is the only place that we need to update. Only one record in the tags table. In contrast, in the previous design, because we repeated tags as strings in the courses table, we had several occurrences of each tag. We could have front end repeated in so many different places. Then if we wanted to rename front end to something else, like let's say we wanted to add a hyphen in the middle, we would have to update several courses records. And as you know, every time we have an update or delete operation, MySQL locks one or more rows. So with the previous design, our rows had to be locked unnecessarily. Why should we lock a course if you want to rename a tag? That doesn't make sense. If you want to rename a tag, the tag row should be the only row that should be locked. Next, we're going to look at the second normal form.